Welcome to our week program, the program we call Moral Side of the News. A group of discussion and panelists are here, and we're going to have a good show today. Quick on Moral Side of the News, a new Indiana law cuts off funding to Planned Parenthood, and Bill gets grilled by Congress. We'll discuss these topics today here with our panel on Moral Side of the News. For Joe Graff, St. Edward Catholic Church. Dr. Tom Mobley, Nelson Christian. Dr. John Slackenridge Chapel, Free Meth. Rabbi Galia Rooks, The Temple, and Dr. Kevin Smith, Southern Baptist Theological Center. <clears throat> India is the first state in the union to cut off Planned Parenthood's Medicaid funding. The law signed by Governor Mitch Daniels this week argues that abortion opponents should send tax dollars to a group that performs the procedure, even though it is paid for with private funds. To sort this all out, here Renee of WHAS 11 <coughs> News. In Albany, residents who benefited Planned Parenthood are disappointed. I think some other way to cut something else. This is very important. I think women and children. Uh, Johnson says the services were important to her. She can't believe funding will be cut. I think I think it should be increased because women's health service is very important. And no, none should be denied just because no money. The rally signs were out in Indianapolis but didn't help the cause. We are being discriminated against. Our patients are being discriminated against. The president of Planned Parenthood Indiana upset by a court ruling. Planned Parenthood efforts to stop the law from taking effect, but a judge denied that request. Then there are 20 low income Hoosiers who lose their PAP tests, who lose their testing and treatment, who lose their birth control. It's, it's a very bad direction. $1.4 billion in federal funding that passes through state will most likely cut from Planned Parenthood. This bill passed with overwhelming bipartisan majority in both houses and clearly supported by public opinion polls I've seen. This expresses the will of the people of Indiana. Indiana Governor Mitch Daniels wanted to cut funding because Planned Parenthood is linked to abortions. Indiana is the first state to take this budget measure. Renee Murphy, UHS 11 News. So we're to our panel here today on Moral Side and just ask some questions. Panel, what are your thoughts on this? Governor Daniels, Indiana, and Planned Parenthood. Who to start? I'll start. Wake us up. I'll start. <laughs> I, I thought I would be uh, doing rebuttal because I think I'm going to be uh, a lonely voice here. Well, we want to sit. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, um, first of all, I, I think that this is outrageous. I don't think it'll stand up in court. I was very sorry that they couldn't get a, a stay or a you know postponement until it had gone through uh, the court system. I think that it is um, hurting a lot of. Women. I think it's um, hacking the most vulnerable part of the population in the sense that um, women of any kind of means will continue to have um, breast exam, which, you know, lower the rate of from breast cancer, and smears, and, um, you know, sexually transmitted diseases and all the rest of that. Um, and also will be able to um, travel to have legal safe abortions. It's the poor women who won't be able to do that and who will suffer uh, in so ways, not just, I mean, it's, 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 it's only a small the pie that has to do with abortion. And yes, Planned Parenthood does perform abortions are still legal in this country. Um, you know, it, you may be against the war, but it doesn't mean that you get to choose, you know, where your money goes and where it comes from and what you pay in taxes and things like that while it is still legal in this country, which of course I believe 100% it should be. And just the icing on the cake is that if women of um, low income are cut off from reasonable birth control method, it will probably increase the number of abortions in that state. Joe, Tom? Well, I think it's going to be a matter of, uh, you know, the state rights versus uh, federal. Uh, and the, the court case um, is going to get into that. I, I feel sure it will. Uh, the things that, and I don't think you're going to see this only state. I think you're going to see these other states following a suit on this. Uh, it, it's the kind of thing that w when you plan parenthood, uh, some of us were around, maybe we remember when that kind of started, Planned Parenthood, and now all kinds of rationale for keeping it because of pap smears and uh, breast uh, exams. exams uh, you know, all these various things are... <laughs> When it started, this was not the case. And, you know, it's like a lot of institutions, once they get started, they expand in order to keep and perhaps uh, keep their purpose and to keep their organization. And 
sometimes they completely get around and, and trying to hide what their, one of their major purposes are. I mean, you what you want to. Planned Parenthood has had to change because uh, of the pressure that's been placed upon it, and it's going to continue to be placed upon it. And I do not feel that those of us who oppose abortion should have to pay for abortions. I mean, I'm very strongly about that. Nor should we have to pay for those who would recommend that, uh, that people abortions. I, I think uh, there, there is a little bit of a misdirection here, not on this, but in the, in the, uh, uh, the head of uh, Planned Parenthood in Indiana. Uh, Low-income women will not be cut off from receiving the services they need. Just won't be able to go to Planned Parenthood and receive them. So it's really an institution survival issue. Versus, uh, Where are they going to go? A hospital, a clinic. This um, is the clinic. Planned well, is go to another only, clinic. <laughs> Planned Parenthood is not the only low-income health care provider in the state of Indiana. The, the, what it is 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 it's Planned Parenthood trying to survive in order to. Uh, provide 25 percent of the abortion in the United States. Um, you know, they are the big abortion industry. And on a broader scale, this issue and then other issues, for example, with health care and then some other issues with environmental things, um, you know, in, in the scope of American history, we're probably at a kind of redefine, not, not re-examining some federalism issues, um, just the interaction between states and the federal government. Uh, pass through funds, uh, federal mandates, those kind of things, and um, this is one. I mean, this is this is one issue you can spot out maybe eight or nine issues where there's um, uh, federal state tension on a variety of mandates and the fund these types of things. But this is this is such a hot button issue, so divisive in our country right now. Um, it goes so far beyond states' rights. I mean, if you were looking to, to deal with federalist issues, you could pick one of a number of other ones that would be cleaner about state rights than it would be having to do with... Um, well, I mean, there's several lawsuits mm -hmm. regarding a variety of issues mm -hmm. where governors and the and mm -hmm. governors and the president are just at odds on a variety of things. Yeah, like uh, gay marriage. Well, no, I mean, I mean their financial... Um, with, with states, states, yeah, money, when there's yeah, financial obligations on states and they're just trying to work budget things. Mm -hmm. And governors, governors and mayors are close and they have a, more of a pragmatic financial approach than the common president who can just endlessly print money. States can't. I, I think one of the issues here that, that strikes me, it goes back to part of our health care debate that, you know, how we uh, have health service to people with low income. Uh, I'm not a great fan of Planned Parenthood. Uh, for obvious reasons uh, with the abortion question, but part of me sense this feels as a political football uh, and kind of it's an easy uh, straw man to put up with uh, Planned Parenthood. They have expanded over years to many other issues beyond abortion, whether that's, uh, as I said, is, is a game playing or maybe because needed. I, I don't know. I think that's, I'd, I'd like to have a little more objective look at that. Um, there are many good services that they do provide for some people. And I don't know why particularly Planned has been has picked as the target. Uh, but my biggest concern is, again, as, as you know, there are some poor women who do need breast exams. They do need pap smears, all those kind of things. How are we accessed this? Are we killing sling off? Is that going to eliminate somewhere else? Or is some of those funds, okay, if we're going to eliminate funds here, well, let's put more funds over in hospitals or clinics. Uh, for those kind of necessary to things. And it, it seems like uh, we're kind of a slicing the pie in a couple different ways to say, well, we don't like this, so we're going to lump everything in, in that area. Mm -hmm. and, and the bottom line, it seems to me, that there are poor women that do need some medical services, some of which I approve of, some of which I don't approve of. But, uh, how are we protecting that group? Right. Well, the article said that the, one of the Indiana state officials said there are other places where sure. low-income women can receive health care. There are other places, but go, going to the hospital is is so much more expensive than going to clinics. So, and hospital already, you know, overloaded. That is um, <coughs> not feasible as an answer, and it's very expensive, even if it were possible, um, without long waits and jamming things up even more. Um, and yeah, there probably are other clinics where you can do that, but not enough at this point because... They, people have been going to Planned Parenthood. They have a good regimen for really quality health um, for these women. And I'd also like to p point out none of the Medicaid money goes to pay abortion. It all goes to other health services. So they're not taking government money 
Well, flat purpose. yeah, but I mean, uh, that's like saying, yeah, I mean, yeah, when I go to the Reddit casino, I don't support the uh, gambling. Or the, uh, really? I mean, about 45% uh, of uh, Planned Parenthood's budget um, comes from government payments, grants, uh, reimbursements, whatever. Uh, it, how much of that is needed to uh, to keep chairs in the waiting room and to pay the receptionist? I, 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 okay, I hear, I what, hear you're what you're saying. saying. <clears throat> the issue is plain and simple, and we've all hit on it. Abortion. Yep. Uh, if Planned Parenthood in Indiana were to stop doing abortions today, I would bet. Well, I would, wouldn't bet, but I would uh, imagine that uh, <laughs> funding would would open up. It, it's it's an issue of whether the people of India, through their elected officials, want to fund. Uh, entity that does 20% of the abortions in the United States. Yeah, it, it's that simple. Uh, uh, the people who are defending Planned Parenthood on these other medical issues, as important as they are, are, are doing so because Planned Parenthood provides abortions. Those who are wanting to take funding away are doing so because Planned Parenthood provides abortions. And if you go back, you know, if you go back 30 years or 25 years, and, and you're going to find out that that's what it was about. I mean, these other things crept in again to try to give us some legitimacy and, and maybe for good reason maybe there was a uh, you know a hole in the medical care yeah, system that needed to, to provide that i think the but need was there and they're trying to save lives <coughs> go back five to 40 years and see what the, the well, reason for the well, parent I, I guess my question is i think we can argue both ways about this but uh, let's say it's 1.4 i believe a million that that's mm -hmm. going to them those services we would probably not argue over that are needed, how can we take some of that money and say, well, we're gonna supply more to hospitals and clinics so people can take care of it? It seems like, okay, we give this money over here because we don't like this organization. No one's losing in that. And that's my argument to say, how are we affecting some of those that get needed medical care? My sense is that somebody who's uh, that service and needs the government funding to assist in those services, if they went somewhere else, by, by those services, I mean the, the non-abortion health services. Health right. services. Yeah, mm -hmm. there we go, thanks. Uh, would get the funding and assist at another location. I mean, that assumption, I could be incorrect in. Then, but but I, it's a pass-through that they're getting government funds that are supposed through Indiana to this agency. So that, that fund is, is not coming, you know, can part of that funding say, well, we don't want to support as a, a legislator, if that's their opinion, but we're going to set half of this ER, one twenty-five percent of this money, some other agency, then those people are being protected. I don't hear that, that okay. coming up. Well, and if the federal government will okay that, uh, I would say that that will not be a problem in the state of Indiana. Uh, but you're talking about federal money coming through the state, right. designated specifically. So if the federal government's willing to let that go in a direction, I don't think we've got a problem here. I, I think well, you'll find that they're not necessarily going to want to do that. And that's the, you know. the thing that... Uh, uh, that we have to deal with, and, and so now the federal issue, yeah, and Kevin, like here, right. here, versus here, here's a block of money for low income okay, versus here's a block of money specifically for and, and states are starting to start. And federal money is great for highways, but is it worth what you know? And it's not just you know, federal have nothing yeah. to do with the portion. Uh, this is an issue that is going to go much further, and I'm anxious to see what the courts do say. I mean, do states have a right to say I don't want federal money? Oh. A great segue to our second topic, another federal <laughs> issue. Well, oh. Congress grilled oil executives during conscious <laughs> hearings on Capitol Hill this week amid widespread over the high Greek prices currently. It's all part of an effort by Democrats to push a new bill that would scrap tax breaks for the biggest and most